Well, hi there. This is Bubba Chunk, and he is a common snapping turtle. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Huh? You good boy? No. I love common snapping turtles, but for a long time, for almost 10 years, living here in Utah, I didn't have one. And I didn't have one because they were illegal here in Utah. They're not a native species in Utah. They, I'm from Colorado, and so on the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains, from Florida all the way up into Canada, common snapping turtles are common. But they don't get over the Rocky Mountains, at least not on their own. And so on the western side of the Rocky Mountains, they are only here as an introduced species brought over by people. Utah didn't allow you to have them. In fact, if you found a common snapping turtle in Utah, there was only one legal thing you could do with it. And that's kill it. The idea of killing a common snapping turtle is for me absolutely devastating because common snapping turtles are definitely my very favorite turtles. If I have a reptile that I like more than common snapping turtles, I couldn't tell you what it would be. They might be my favorite animal in the world. I just adore them. And thankfully, a, a group of people, one of them being Matt Jepson, who actually came in here not very long ago to talk about this experience, started working with, well, the government here in the state of Utah and effectuated a big change to the laws, including the laws regarding snapping turtles. Well, th these new laws that allowed you to potentially capture and keep a snapping turtle if you found one in the wild here in Utah changed effective the beginning of January 2020. And early in January, my wife, who's an elementary school teacher, got a phone call from one of her parents with a, well, actually, I think it was a text message with a picture of a colossal snapping turtle my dream animal and an animal I really wanted to have on display here in Clint's reptile room. In that text, she said, would your husband be interested in this turtle? And I basically teleported into my car. I just got there as quickly as I could because one thing they said also is that they had just called the reptile rescue and they were on their way as well. Now, I didn't know if the reptile rescue was aware that the laws regarding common snapping turtles had changed. If they weren't aware, then the only legal thing that could be done with a common snapping turtle, as far as they might know, is to kill it on sight. They might beat me there. And so I drove frantically as fast as I could to that snapping turtle, all the while trying to get a hold of my friend who I know well who runs the reptile rescue. I couldn't get a hold of him because he was busy not going after this turtle, but he was, he was elsewhere. But it turned out his brother, who probably knows even less about the laws than he does, was headed to go get that snapping turtle. And when I got very, very close to where this turtle was, I got a call that the rescue had already come and taken him away. This was horrifying. This was horrifying because I didn't know what they were going to do with him. If they, you know, I thought there was a decent chance they would kill him before I would have a chance to get there. And, and when I finally got a hold of my friend, it was obvious that he was not aware that the laws had changed regarding snapping turtles. And at first he's like, no, no you, you can't, can't have, have him, him unless, unless you have, you the, have permits. the permits. And you know, I didn't have the permits, partially because permits were no longer required to have a snapping turtle in Utah. I started, again, frantically, sending him through text all of the screenshots of the new laws that went into effect at the beginning of 2020. And after he received all of those, he went, oh, great, come and get him. And so, with the greatest relief that I had experienced in a very long time, I knew that the turtle was still alive and that he was going to stay alive and I was gonna go get this, I was gonna get to have him. He was gonna be here in the reptile room. Now, now when I did get there, they warned me of something, something I found completely unsurprising. They said, he's a very grumpy turtle. And uh, 
for a colossal snapping turtle caught walking down the street of a fairly major city, it surprised me absolutely not at all that he was a grumpy turtle. The one thing is though, including, well, the whole time I've had him, Bubba Chunk here has never done anything aggressive to me at all. It actually wasn't until Joseph Carter came here to the reptile room that I saw what they were talking about. Joseph picked him up by the shell in kind of the manner that people normally handle snapping turtles. And he turned into an absolute, well, typical snapping turtle. I could finally see what the rescue was talking about because that's the way people normally handle snapping turtles. He was mouth open snapping. And for a long time I had to tell people about this, but Joseph actually released a whole video and he shows that moment. So you can see it is in him to be a very grumpy snapping turtle indeed. However, and if you've seen our video on snapping turtles, you'll notice I handle him very differently from the way that people normally handle snapping turtles. In fact, I'll go get him right now and show you. I've slowly been figuring out just how much I can trust this turtle. And so far, it seems to be completely. I've had nice snapping turtles before, but they were a heck of a lot smaller than Bubba Chunk. And the cost of being wrong about how nice this turtle is, is quite high. So I started off with a couple of fairly simple things, uh, just regular handling. I started hand feeding him. He actually takes food very gently, almost like a red-eared slider. Most people when they handle a snapping turtle will handle them either by the sides of the shell or they'll pick them up by the tail, which can really hurt them. I use his tail for stability, but I don't support any of his weight with it. I support all of his weight from below, and he seems to appreciate it because he's very, very respectful and patient with me when I handle him. I mean, you can see he wants out, but he's not doing anything aggressive at all. And he never does because he's a delightful soul. After I did that for a little bit, I started slowly but surely touching him behind his front legs. And eventually I, I moved up to messing with his feet a little bit. And he always just stayed calm. Never ever turned towards me or acted like he wanted to bite or attempted a bite. After a while, I got a little more confidence with him and I started to touch him just a little bit on the neck. And after a few weeks of that, I moved up to just gently touching the top of his head. You can see the way he's reacting. He's not concerned at all about it. Where we've arrived now, I'm able to scratch him on top of the head and even underneath the chin. And uh, he doesn't even seem bothered by it. Sometimes he'll raise into it almost like Gus Gus will. Seems to enjoy the interaction. And uh, I gotta tell you, like it's not, it's not obviously perfectly safe. Uh, you know, there, there are perfectly safe ways to interact with a snapping turtle. This is not one of them. He could really hurt me. Of course, the same thing is true of your dog. So some of it is just knowing the individual animal, knowing its behaviors, knowing how to read its body language, and never failing to pay attention to what it's doing. Even if you're filming a video or talking to somebody else about it, pay attention to what that animal is doing. We will probably build even more confidence with one another in the future. I really don't know how much farther I can go with my confidence in him. He's a wonderful turtle. He's, he's calm, he's relaxed, he's patient with me. He never does anything aggressive. I love this turtle. He, I'm, I'm obsessed with him. And anyway, thank you for coming by and hearing his story. I am so glad and thankful to people like Matt Jepson and the rest of his team that made it possible for us to have him here in the reptile room. It's been unbelievable. And I'd also like to give a special thanks to our patrons at Patreon who are helping us to be able to build a, a really awesome new pond for Bubba Chunk. Uh, it's gonna be a really incredible place for him and, and hopefully you can come here to the reptile room sometime, hang out with Bubba Chunk, see what a delightful soul he is. As always, like and subscribe and we hope to see you real soon.